Hey, Shalom, Israel. First off, I would like to say, Kar Halal, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rakakadash. I would like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Also, would like to say peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the Akim that's pushing this word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the few sisters that watch and sincerely believe, Shalom to you as well. Just back with a, another uh, quick lesson. Uh, just going into how uh, the Lord is only dealing with a few good men, namely the elect. Uh, within the nation of Israel, the 144,000, and then, of course, the one-third of the nation that's reserved to be saved from the destruction of great Babylon when you have a shy who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ returns. Um, I'm just going to read uh, some scriptures and just go into how, even though it's a, it's a daunting task uh, for, the, for the elect, because the Lord, he's dealing with quality over quantity, He's not looking for a large multitude of people to come into this thing to build the, the correct way. So it is a tedious job for those men who, through the spirit, were set up to come into it. But nonetheless, the laborers are going to be few for this task because most people, like it talks about in Matthew, the seventh chapter, uh, in order to follow Yahweh Shai, you have to come to the, through the straight gate, which that's a position of difficulty that most of our people, the men of our nation, and just our nation in general, that they're not, they don't have the, ca the capacity spiritually to, to handle that load. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it is a burden in some sense that's being placed on the elect shoulder. But of course, Yahweh Shah told his elect, his disciples, that his burden is light. So I'm gonna read this, and uh, hopefully this will edify. This is uh, in Saint Matthew nine. And I'll start at uh, 9 and 35. It says, And Yahweh Shah went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And we know that the gospel is the good news and the kingdom uh, is ultimately the, the, the body of, 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 of Israel, the, the Israelites, which the kingdom of heaven is going to be on earth. And it all starts with the people before the actual place. So Yahweh Shah was going amongst the midst of the people, teaching, preaching, and it says healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And right now, too, our people uh, today, even unto this day, have a, a, a very uh, a high uh, mental illness. They have a mental deficiency. They have a spiritual and, and mental deficiency. Man, our people are sick. But even the brothers that... A four time before we woke up to this truth, we were sick as well, you know, but Yahweh shot through the word. That's what healed us, you know, and it's a continual healing process until we're perfected in the kingdom. But the point being made, a majority of our people right now, they're just too sick to the point where they're not going to be healed on this side. Only the elect is going to take heed to the, the preaching in the instruction of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah to take the necessary steps to be completely healed, man. Because even just going into how brothers be going into the herbs and the natural ways to just heal the body, when I know our people are riddled with all types of disease, our people don't even want to take good advice when you try to tell them, you know, what f uh, foods to eat, what foods to abstain from, you know. To cover their diet. So how much more so just the overall gospel and testimony of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. It's only going to rest on the ears of the elect. I'm going to continue reading. This is St. Matthew 9 and 36. It says, but when he saw the multitudes, and I was saying earlier too, the Lord is not dealing for a large multitude. It says he was moved with compassion on them. But the Lord, even though he knew that a multitude of the nation of Israel, him out there preaching the, the, the gospel of the kingdom, he knew that most of them, most of them were not going to get it. He still had compassion on his people. So that's why ultimately, even the two thirds, they got to go on this side. They're going to be brought back by the elect because the, the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah has always had compassion on his people, even though they're wicked as all hell right now. It says because they fainted and were scattered abroad. As sheep having no shepherd. And that's the prophecy and legacy of, of Israel at this appointed time, man. Just being scattered and uh, not having a, a, a shepherd, not having any guide, because that's what a shepherd does. He guides his sheep. We don't have any standard to live by. 
but only the elect, those that were stirred uh, to remembrance, their pure minds were stirred to remembrance, they're going to come and they're going to uh, follow the, the shepherd, which is Yahweh Shah through the word. And that's what's happening right now. But we understand clearly, you know, the brothers that have some level of experience in the faith that a multitude or a majority of our people, they just not going to rock with it on this side, man. You know, it's not, you know, a, a big numbers thing. Now, it is going to come a time where the Lord, you know, is going to send a, a famine of the word. And, and, and a lot of our people, even sincerely uh, out there that are without this knowledge, that are ignorant, they're going to be searching for the truth. So it could be a flood, so to speak. But at the same time, the Lord is always continually um, doing a sifting, you know. So that's why the men that come in, they got to be in the right spirit to just uh, bear the, the long haul of, of the of the task of the labor, you know, because it's not you got to have been chosen from the foundation of the earth to, 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 to come into this thing, labor and continue into the end, you know. This is uh, the point here in Matthew 9 and 37. It says, then said he unto his disciples, which disciple means follower of Yahweh Shah. And that's the elect. Ultimately, it says the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. So it's a lot of work to do. That's why the scripture says in Psalms, the 96th chapter, who shall rise up for me against the workers of iniquity and the evildoers. I'm, I'm, I'm roughly paraphrasing that scripture. And it's only a, a, a chosen, a small remnant of men that's going to stand up and, and, and hold themselves as men, having a standard of integrity and a backbone to stand up for righteousness, regardless of the, the adversity and the high stakes of, of danger, you know, and jeopardy that they're putting their lives in, you know, because they were set up, you know, it was a preeminent thing. They were set up from the foundation of the, the, of the heaven and the earth to, to, to fulfill that role. So within that process, you know, I know me and my uh, small time in the faith, I understand that uh, men are going to come in that are cool, that are going to actually learn this knowledge. Brothers that, you know, I've been around in the camp and then for whatever reason, they don't stick around in this thing. And then it's just going to be guys that listen and, and get, you know, this truth or whatever. But they spirit not right to where they're going to uh, seriously apply what they're being taught to, to build themselves up, to, to truly repent. You know, that's why even John the Baptist, when you go into Matthew, the third chapter, you know, he was baptizing at the Jordan and he the, the, the Pharisees, you know, they, they came up to his baptism and he said, basically, man, um, who are basically who are you, you know, to, to know. Matter of fact, I'm going to get that real quick. I'm, I'm going to finish this and then I'll get Matthew three. This is Matthew nine and thirty seven. It says, then said he unto his disciples. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye, therefore, that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors into his harvest. So the Lord is going to send the, 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 the right amount of, of labors into his harvest. But the Lord is not dealing with everybody. He's not looking for everybody, man. You know, it's a, a very selective process. Select and elect. It all goes hand in hand. I wanted to get that account with John the Baptist because I brought it up because at the end of the day, it's all about repenting, man, and drawing closer to the Lord as the time draws closer. And it's only going to be a small amount of men who come in that seriousness of mind frame, you know, repentance and hope of salvation. Uh, this is, you know, I'll, I'll start at uh, Matthew 3 and 5. It says, then went out to him. Uh, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So this is talking about John the Baptist who prepared the way for the Lord. He was baptized and he had disciples even before the Lord uh, came on the scene and, and went full fledged in his ministry. Verse seven, it says, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, a generation of vipers who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come. So that's how brothers that's really out there sincerely laboring uh, feel sometimes, man. You know, you got guys on the comment board, guys that want to creep in unaware, you know, but 
just like uh, John the Baptist said, uh, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Because ultimately, the Lord's only dealing with his elect. He's not dealing with a large multitude, you know? He's only looking for serious-minded men who are about building, building and, and setting their eyes and their, and, their, and their true lively energy towards the kingdom of heaven, man, and righteousness. It says, verse 8, here's the point. It says, uh, bring forth, therefore, fruits, meet for repentance. So that's what John the Baptist basically had to uh, rebuke those Pharisees and Sadducees on, man. So the Lord, he, he's not dealing with everybody, man. You know, of course, when you first come into the truth, when you first learn in this knowledge, man, you fall into that infatuation just with, you know, the whole nation. And just like Yahweh Shai had compassion on, on Israel, sometimes brothers that go out and speak do, you know. That's why as you go through more experience in the faith and preaching, you have a certain level of discernment. I know years ago where we see Jake doing certain things when we out teaching, we may react it one way, but... Now that we, we brothers have more season, you know, we don't let our people, even if we know that they ain't rocking with this truth, you know, just uh, get 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 us out of our uh, integrity. You know what I'm saying? We still uh, have some uh, level of compassion. That's the point I wanted to make. But ultimately, the Lord is de only dealing with fruits, meat for repentance, man. Those men that are really not going to make any compromising uh, compromises, rather, when it comes to the standard of applying this knowledge towards salvation in the kingdom ultimately matter of fact I'm going to get this real quick and this is all just impromptu I just wanted to say a few words but because it's just too far man especially with this whole social media age Jake with the memes like everybody's awoke and everybody's in the truth man so called but there's only a, a, a small um, body of men who are really about what they uh, what they talk about, so to speak. Lord willing, me and the men that I've come up with in the, in the Akim that's, you know, pushing this word in the right spirit, we endure to the end, you know. But the Lord is, is making it made, uh, manifest to uh, who the real men are as well, just through various situations happening through the spirit. This is a... Uh, Second Timothy two and one, it says, thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Hamashiach Yahushah. So the Lord's looking for real men. He's not looking for uh, a, a huge multitude in quantity. It's all about quality. You know, fruit me for repentance. Those men that are going to be strong in this grace period that we have in the Lord, man, to work on our um, shortcomings and our mishaps, so to speak. You know, and just grow from glory to glory in the faith until everything is perfected when Yahweh Shai returns. These things only apply for a few chosen men. You know, Second Timothy 2 and 2, it says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And every man is not faithful, man. Everybody that's on the comment board that's an Israelite that's saying Shalom, good video, brother. Maybe out on the highways and the byways coming to watch the camps, you know, cheerleading and doing all of these different things on the sidelines, man. They're not all considered to be faithful men or faithful women, you know, for the few sisters who may proclaim to be about this truth. But when you really line things up, you, you, you're really not coming in the right spirit. So that's why the Lord's selective once again. You know, you can't get select without the elect. You know, it says the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And that's fruit me for repentance. You only really at this stage for brothers that know the deal want to really spend your time uh, helping build up a brother who, you know, you perceive through your judgment, through the spirit is really going to rock with this thing, man. And he'll have the ability to teach somebody else. He'll be faithful in the Lord. Strive for this truth uh, with all his his mind and his spirit, man. And then plant seeds to build up the, the overall elect, to seal the elect so we can get the hell up out of here. Because that's what uh, a, a heavy part of the mission is at the end of the day as well. Sealing the most high's men. And then just at that point, we know prophecy is going to all come to be. 
And that's a wrap until the kingdom is established, man. And then that process, of course, that we're going to have to go through, you know, in, in that in that in that span of time. That's all I wanted to get on that. It's, I'm going to get another scripture. I think I'll just end out with this one. That's why the, the apostles, you know, they was in the spirit, you know, just getting on these other Israelite uh, camps that want to talk about having unity camps and out there debating and just doing all of that madness, man. At this point, the wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the planet. It compromising it, the, the true standard of what we know is, is right and wrong. We can't we can't have people that are doing that anymore, man. That really proclaim to be a follower of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Someone's gonna have to stand on principle. And just based off the lot of the what the scriptures say the prophets would come in the spirit of, man, it's only a few men that are coming in that in that in that uh lot, so to speak. Starting with the apostles and the elders and the men throughout the order of Great Millstone, man, and any other uh brother that's teaching the correct doctrine, you know, that may not even be affiliated with Great Millstone, you know. This is uh, Ephesians 2 and 19. It says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of the Most High. So at one point we were strangers, man. We were Gentiles. We were uh, dry bones without this truth, not having any foundation of who we were, not knowing uh, what way to go. We didn't have a guide, but through Yahweh Shai, through the word, you know, we were stirred up to remembrance, to know, to have a, a, a direction and a course to go. And there's only a certain men that are going to meet the criteria of those fellow citizens, man, that are really the saints, the elect, that are going to build up the, the temple that make up the temple of the Most High. And that's what's happening right now, man. Uh, like the prophecy talks about in Amos 9 and 11, the, the, the tabernacles of, the, of David is being reestablished. Through the elect preaching this word that at a four time before we we got this truth man we were just dead to hell man without hope so the lord is is very particular in in how he's building and you can't build with everybody if you got a structure that you got plans for that you know that you want to be esteemed high you're going to be selective and, and the masons and the, and, the, and the artisans that you used for that process, that building process. And it's the same thing with the Most High. He is choosy. It says, Ephesians 2 and 20, it says, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Yahweh Shah Mashiach himself being the chief cornerstone. So that's what the foundation is being built on, man. The apostles of old onto the apostles out preaching today who woke us up and the prophets, you know. That we have read about, you know, that through the spirit, if we're those men, you know, some brothers might be some of those men. And Yahweh Shah himself being the chief cornerstone, you know. It says, in whom all the building. So that shows that the, the, the nation of Israel and right now the building of the house of David is being done by those elect pieces. It says, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. So the right pieces have to be put in place to build the temple of the Lord. You just can't try to put in corners and sides and things that don't don't fit the framework of what the Lord is building. It, it's just not going to happen. You know, the spirit is, is just really controlling the show at the end of the day. And the spirit is basically drawing those elect men together to 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 do a miraculous work in the earth through the preaching of the word man it says in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of the most high through the spirit so the spirit of the most high it, it dwells within the temple which the temple is the body of men that are building the right way lord willing we continue to finish the building and yahweh shah is going to complete the building you know because he's the chief cornerstone of the building. So within that process, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a tenuous, a strenuous labor. 
you know, but the Lord is only dealing with a few laborers, man. You know, the harvest is plenteous and the laborers are few. So the Lord is dealing with uh, quality versus versus quantity. So that's important, man, you know. So with all being said, the hands that we do have on deck, you know, just through the spirit of exhortation, we all need to be all hands on deck doing what we need to be doing, trying to increase and grow in the spirit, you know. So with all being said, uh, hopefully this made sense and edified. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.